Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips and today I'm going to be making a Squid Game Techno track. Why? Because I want to. So I'm actually going to be sampling some of the sounds from the Squid Game soundtrack and then making them into a techno track from a completely blank project all the way through the sound design, the drums, the programming, the mixing, some arrangement, the automation, everything. And you can download the project file completely free below this video as well. This is following on in my insanely popular in the style of creation videos where I've been supported by Boris Brasher, Duke Dumont and many other artists as well. So you can check those videos out as well. And I have to say I've only seen halfway through Squid Game at the moment so no spoiler alerts in the comments please. Anyway without further ado I really hope you enjoy this Squid Game techno track. So let's hop into the door and get it done. Oh yeah and if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel if you want tutorials, tips and tricks every single week on electronic music production. And you can check out some of my courses because we are a fully fledged music production school. Okay let's do it Squid Game techno. One take billio, no cuts, I've got my tea, extra energy, lovely job. So first thing we need to do is get that techno tempo. I'm going to choose 132 BPM and then the next thing we need to do is to bring in the samples that we're going to base this track on and as this is a squid game track I'm going to bring in the Pink Soldiers track. Uh, let me just grab it in. I definitely didn't sample it from YouTube. Definitely not. Great so once we brought it in we need to sync it to the tempo of our track. Now the way I'm going to do that is just go in, unwarp it, make sure there's no warping, get to the first transient, which would be the oh, as I said. And then we are going to try and work out what tempo this is by just adjusting the tempo of our project until it's in sync, like a DJ would mixing tracks. And actually you can see this audio file is syncing up to the grid as well. So I think it's 120 BPM. Perfect, so warp that, choose 120 BPM. We can now put that tempo back to 132 and it's all gonna be in sync. And then let's choose Complex Pro, it's the best warp mode for musical stuff, as long as there's like drums is best with beats, but musical stuff, Complex Pro. Anyway, now let's save this bad boy. Give it the best name known to man, Squid Game. Let's call it Calamari Olympics. Why not, eh? Why not? Now let's get that pounding techno beat in. So we need to create a rumble kick basically. So what I'll do is I'll just name that kick, color it green, organization is very important. Then I'm gonna go into the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, which you can check out below this video. And we are gonna go drums, kicks, find the techno kicks. That's a nice meaty one, just drag that in and then put it on every beat, like so. Now this is really important. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, te uh, the volume of that right down to minus 12 because we want to avoid any clipping on the master channel. And minus 12 is a great point to anchor your kick. Cool, now let's make that rumble. We'll turn this down for a bit. What I'm gonna do here is create an audio track and again, you can do this in any door, but I'm doing this in Ableton Live 10. And let's just call that Rumble Bass. Or oh, Rub Miller Bass. That will do just fine. Color it yellow, the natural color of bass. And then what we want to do is open up the routing, choose the uh, audio from the kick channel, like so. Make sure that we have the monitoring on. And then it's just doubled up now. Let's do it post effect so we can hear it, even if this is muted. Cool, so now we need to make that rumble. What we're gonna do is add some, there's a few ways you can do it, and if you click wherever around this video, I've got an advanced techno rumble kick and bass tutorial that you can check out after this. But let's just put a reverb on there. Make sure we've got low cut turned off. Choose the reverb length. And there are a few stages to a techno rumble, which if you watch that tutorial next, you'll see them. But first we are gonna add some distortion, get it sounding really gnarly. And 
and it's made it mono with this button here, which is great because we don't want this in stereo because we could run into phase cancellation issues in the low end. So that's our primary rumble, but we need to make it dark so our kick doesn't uh, clash with it. So just choose a compressor, open up this button here, uh, choose sidechain and then choose a sidechain input from your sidechain channel. If we look up here, I've actually got a sidechain channel that's just a, a normal sampler with a very short sharp rim shot playing in it. And that's so that all of the duck length is controlled by the um, <laughs> attack and release rather than the kick length, which happens if you sidechain it direct from the kick. But you could use something like Nicky Romero's Kickstart or Steve Duda's LFO tool. So let's just make this pump. Cool, now we need to take out that high end because this is supposed to be a rumble baby. So let's just choose an E key. And then with the kick. So now what we're gonna do is group these two together like this. Just call it kick and bass and we're gonna process them together to get it really pumping. Let's color that red put a bit of saturation on there. And what the saturation is going to do is add some upper harmonics. So some more, some higher frequencies, and it's going to gel the kick and the bass rumble together slightly as well. Let's turn off that. Now I'm going to show you something pretty cool here. I'm going to group this, open up this, duplicate that chain, and I'm actually going to pump this second saturator really hard like this. So it's going to sound pretty distorted and nasty. And then I'm going to put an EQ after it and just use the mid frequencies to add some more atmosphere to the rumble. Uh, whoops, added that onto the wrong one, wrong chain. Let's put it after this one. So now what we're going to do is just bring up the second really distorted one. That's just a little bit of saturation there. And now let's bring up the second one. And what that does is just add some extra atmosphere to that rumble. I'm also going to add a little bit of delay in front of it actually just to spice things up a bit more, get some more rhythmic sound in there. Take the feedback down though. And it just adds some more atmosphere. So with the pink soldier sound, Really banging. Okay, let's get those other sounds in there. So what we've got now is the closed hat. That's nice and easy. Let's just color this pink for soldiers. Nice. And we're just going to go back to the sample library, have a search around for a nice hat sound. Something really short and snappy that's going to pop through the mix. This will do. And I'm all about working quickly, guys. If you've taken any of my courses or my masterclass, you know that Getting those ideas down quickly whilst they're fresh in your head is such a key skill. Now I want to gel that into the mix a bit. So what I've done, I've got these two reverb channels here, which are auxiliary channels, and I've just got a standard room reverb, I've got a utility to bump up the volume a little bit and then I've cut out the low frequencies with an EQ. So let's feed some of that closed hat, which is green of course, the natural colour of drums, into the room reverb. Ooh, naughty, I'm seeing some clipping here, naughty pink soldiers, naughty squid. Okay, let's get a limiter on that kick and bass bus. 
This is something I don't usually do, but for techno, because it's so driven, I want both of these things to be limited slightly. It's going to stop it clipping. Now let's get some techno percussion in there as well. In fact, what I'm going to do, this is a secret trick I haven't shown you before, so I'm just going to add a little bit of extra um, percussion in this rumble. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send the normal kick into this. This is going to be a completely new kick, and it's just going to add a little extra uh, width and interest to that low-end rumble. So let's again go back to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. Just choose a different kick. And now check this out. Check this bad boy out. Wow, that sounds really good, Will. Well done. Okay, so uh, we've got this little kick here. At the moment, it sounds horrible. Absolutely fine. We love horrible sounding kicks. And then I'm going to take it down in volume and I'm going to blur it slightly with another reverb just to take it into rumble zone. Again, let's take out the high end, because it's all about the rumble, baby. But I want it to be triggering slightly early, so what I'm going to do is I'll open up this delay channel, and I'm going to just turn it down a few milliseconds. Now, I could do it by moving this across from the grid. I wanted to show you using this tool because I haven't really used it before uh, on these tutorials. So let's color this in green. Now we don't want that sub frequencies to be in stereo again. So all I'm going to do is put another utility on the end of this channel. I'm going to do bass mono. So everything under 120 hertz is going to be mono, but I still get the stereo width in those higher frequencies. This is 100% mono. Oh, boring. Amazing. Now we can actually use this pump compression here, let's just call it pump comp, that we used on our rumble. We can now take it and use it on anything in the track. So we could put it on this kick percussion as well. So it cuts it out like that. I'm going to put it before the EQ though, because it adds this little click if you do it this way. And this is going to take out that high end click. Cool. Now we want to add that techno percussion. So let's just add a percussion track. I'm going to use a loop for this for two reasons. One, I'm lazy. And two, it is um, a, a nice way to get a different texture into your track that just finding one shots is, you know, a bit harder to do. So let's go down here. We've got some house loops. I quite like that sound actually. So let's, let's put that in there. Make sure it's synced up, 128. But we don't want all of it because this is kind of a house loop. But I like that kind of tom percussion. So I'm just gonna take some of this loop like this. I don't want the clap because it's techno. That sounds pretty cool. Just, just that, that's all I'm gonna take. So let's have a listen. Just that bongo kind of uh, loopy bit. So let's do that, color it green. And let's call this perk, color this green. And this is what we got. I'm just like vibing on this. That's kind of our main techno banger already. You know, we could process this a bit more just to, to really gnarly it up. That is a technical term. So if we get an amp, which is a really great distortion plugin that comes with Ableton, make sure it's set to 
dual so we get the stereo sound. Let's see what happens if we run this loop through it. Just choose some. It's like someone being punched in the face in a cartoon. Just add some nice texture and grit. But now this actually sounds like it's triggering too early, so I'm going to push it back using this um, millisecond delay. Take out some of those high frequencies. And the low. And I want this one to stick out. And I'm also going to grab another one of the pump compressors and put that over the percussion as well, just to make sure it's ducked out the way of that kick. And it kind of is anyway, because it's in a, a different place. Cool, okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is look at my magic list and ask for you to let me know if you're enjoying this so far. Give me a hell yeah or an amen brother in, that, in the comments, because you know I love that shiz. And then the next thing we're gonna do is add a ride symbol, because that's what my magic list tells me to do. Always obey the magic list. Ride. Here we go. Again, we're just going to dig into some uh, drum samples really quickly. And try and, you know, try and audition them whilst you're listening to the track so you can hear what uh, frequencies are going to hit the spot. That's a pretty techno techno ride. So let's get that in there. Again, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll use um, drum rack, but sometimes I'm just using audio, as you can see today. So let's get this firing on every offbeat, as you would with any kind of open hat, but we're using a ride cymbal instead. And we're going to process this. pretty good already and that's the key with sound selection it's choosing sounds that you know the frequencies already gel together well it's it's you want sounds that are kind of 60% there already or more so let's see what we can do with this ride cymbal I want to I want it to sound even harsher so what I'm gonna do is add a compressor So it's really being driven. And then I'm going to add another one of these pump compressors just to duck it and again allow that kick to pop through. And that will allow you to get a louder mix if you've got uh, yeah, few, less build up in each place. You know, can you dial it back if it's too much? Now I want something interesting to happen with this music. So what, in fact, maybe I should actually like pump this up. No, 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 I'll just stick to that. We'll, we'll keep it on the same pitch. Now what I'm gonna do is create a bass line from scratch. Now when you're creating techno and you've got a rumble bass and a kick, you can't really put too much else in those sub-frequencies because it's already catered for. So what I'm gonna do is create a mid bass that's gonna suggest bass, but is actually gonna be more mid frequencies. That's too pale for bass. Everyone knows that, come on, get your head in the game, son. Okay, so let's create this. Let's call it mid bass in the face, all over the place. And then we are gonna use a wavetable like so. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is just get the notes that I want it to hit. And I want it to work with this Pink Soldiers riff. You know, and I want to keep the Pink Soldiers riff front and center because it's, you know, that the whole theme is Squid Game. And I wanted to do techno because it's, it's got that kind of industrial, dystopian type vibe, which is what Squid Game's about, really. So. So it's a good idea to work out what key it's in at first. Okay, it's in F, I can hear that that's the root note. So what I'm gonna do is just choose two bass notes. You don't want too much of a chord progression in techno, otherwise it sounds a bit cheesy. What I'm gonna do is duplicate all of that. So we can now change the bass note. Rather than turn down the, the signal, because I'm working quickly, I'm just going to throw a limiter on that channel to stop it clipping. And I'm doing this in higher register because it's easier to hear the pitch than if it's really low down and bassy. So let's build out this bass sound. I want it to have an 80s computer game feel because you know in Squid Game when they've got that, that big ball of money, the piggy bank, and it fills up, it goes I love that, that kind of 80s computer game sound. So I'm gonna go for the 80s vibe. What I'm gonna do is just start with a basic sound. Let's choose a saw wave and we want the envelope to open up and then close down to give it a kind of brassy feel. And what I'm gonna do is firstly get the envelope roughly how I want it, jump into the matrix here, not like Neo, more like, you know, Will. And then I'm gonna go hit frequency so I can actually select it and assign that to envelope two. Turn this frequency down and then watch what happens. <laughs> Now it's being run through this envelope. But that's too high, so let's take it down an octave. Brassy. I might have that up rather than down, because that could be too low. I don't know. Just about works. Now let's thicken this up, spread it out a bit. The way I'm gonna do that is add another oscillator. I'll put the sub oscillator on as well, even though we're gonna filter out most of it. I'm gonna choose a different noise, a different shape. That's cool. What I'm also gonna do is assign the LFO, sorry, the envelope, to the oscillator 2 position. And watch what happens here, it's going to actually move through the wavetable too. And that's the beauty of wavetable synth, so you can do cool stuff like that. So now let's fatten it up, thicken it up with some unison. Maybe I'll take the second oscillator down an octave. That's quite gnarly. But again, we don't want this clashing with the sub bass. So what I'm going to do is just take out the low frequencies. So it's more an inferred bass rather than actual bassy sound. I'm also going to duplicate this and just have a second one running an octave up. I suppose I could just do it in the same sound uh, thing, but if you put this to mono, monophonic rather than polyphonic, you couldn't play two notes at the same time in that synth. So let's just call this mid-bass group. 
There we go. Don't forget you can download this project as well below this um, video, completely free. That's a bit more like it. Nice and thick. What I'm going to do is add a bit of erosion. And some saturation. Just to give it a warm feel. I like that one. And now let's see if it clashes with the sub bass, the kick and the rumble. And we could duck this slightly as well. going to do is add reverb to the top bass. Not that one, that's the low bass. So let's call this low, let's call this high, ID high, and then this one. We're going to add reverb to this on an auxiliary channel, and here's one I made earlier. So this is the same as the room reverb, but I've just got a longer decay time on that reverb. There's our dystopian bass sound. And then we are going to put a, another duck on there. So we'll get that pump compressor and see if we should add any duck. Not too much, I don't think. Okay, next thing we are going to do is get the beat repeat on a couple of samples that will recreate this type effect that they use. So let's just listen to this. You can hear that kind of repeated beat uh, sound. We are going to use that later in this track because it's quite a, uh, yeah, again, creates that dystopian feel that we want. So let's get the vocals from red light, green light. Again, I definitely didn't get this off YouTube. I definitely didn't do that. So, let's bring it in. Creepy girl, creepy robot girl more like. Okay, well that's nightmares sorted for me. So let's just take out those low frequencies because they're just going to muddy up the low end, we don't want that. Then I want to create a slightly eerie feel. Now the way I'm going to do that is add a de delay. Um, I'm going to take it right down to quite a low amount. Take the feedback down, turn it to ping pong, and this is going to create a stereo effect. It's actually called the harsh effect. Well that's not. I'm going to check it in mono. That sounds okay. And the way I checked it in mono is because I've got this utility on the master channel with a keyboard shortcut that just turns mono on and off. And that just creates stereo width in that sound. So it's not sounding right. Let's get this in sync with the rest of the track as well. Let's turn warp off and go to the first transient. This one. On. I want that to be in time with the rest of the track. Uh, let's see, we've got this cool sound at the end as well. We'll use that in a, in a little bit. That's her laser eyes focusing on, on you for losing the game. Never lose the game. Right. Let's, uh, we'll warp it and make it complex pro. Now it doesn't matter what it's warped to because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab the end of the clip, hold shift, and that allows us, if warp is turned on, to then kind of time stretch it. So let's try and get it timed correctly. Okay, so. So it's not like a 4 4 rhythm that she's. 
So what I'm going to do is I'll take that and just drag it across. Nope. So that's in time. So what I'm going to do is just repeat this sound here. And I've, I've kind of butchered it slightly to make it fit into two bar, or one, two, one bar. Now it's in time, nice. And that is, you know, you, you could then go in and tweak it slightly with the warp nodes, but I can't be bothered. And the fact it's not perfectly in time gives it a nice edgy feel as well, so I quite like that. So let's hear that in the mix. slightly more in time actually, the second one. And I, by holding command with shift you can move it not to the grid. So this should be a bit easier. Nice. So you could have that, you know, repeating through the track. And I'm going to add something that really is going to give it a more of a techno feel as well. If we create another auxiliary channel, I'm just going to call this, let's call this echo. And this is going to be applied in incidental places, just where I want it. So let's turn that 100% wet, turn it to ping pong, and it's 100% wet because it's on the auxiliary channel. We don't want the dry signal that's being sent to that auxiliary channel being doubled up. Uh, let's turn it to notes. We want yeah, that sounds like it could be good. Now with this, I'm going to turn the feedback to pretty much 100%. And this means with this particular Echo um, device and the Sound Toys Echo Boy will be able to do something similar. It means that it's going to add more saturation over time and just kind of morph slightly, which is great. So let's just turn off all this other stuff. <laughs> can hear it still bouncing around in the background which is pretty cool and let's get this kind of electro so now you know that's creating a really cool techno feel we could even put the feedback past that let's take it right down first so it doesn't just infinitely get gnarlier uh, and then make sure that you've got any processing after that that you might need, so perhaps taking out the low end. You could even put a bit of a compressor on there, a side, again a sidechain compressor to bounce that sound slightly. Um, and then what I would do is automate this uh, send control to just come in where I want it. So maybe just on this little bit. And then I liked it automating I liked it playing this bit as well. So then we've got... Let's turn off the mid bass because I don't really like it that much.
There you go. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I haven't watched all of Squid Game. Don't tell me what happens. I'm only about halfway through. But I hope you enjoyed this anyway. Don't forget you can download this project file, all the samples and stuff. I might have to, I don't know, I can't really let you have the samples from the program itself because then we get done with the copyright in it, bruv. So until next time, cheers and happy producing. And don't forget to check out my masterclass if you want one-on-one -on -one tuition with me and my co-coaches. And yeah, until next time, cheers and happy producing.